say what's happening. Page 31, that'd be great. Bless you. So here we go. Conditional probability. This is the last thing that is probably, you know, something that you have encountered in younger grades, but now we have a specific name for it. It's called conditional probability. And the main idea is we're going to look at dependent events versus independent events. Okay? So you need to make sure you follow here. Um, if two events happen either simultaneously or in sequence, and it does not affect the total number of possible outcomes, we call those events independent. So I'm going to highlight this part. You, you notice that it does not affect the total number of outcomes possible. Like whatever happens before has no impact on the possible outcomes. So those are called independent events. So example, I, I want to show you using a tree diagram here. 31, Dominic. What's the probability of rolling a 5 and rolling a 3 with two six-sided dice? Okay, so one thing I want you to notice is the and part. So we're going to go probability of rolling a 5 and rolling a 3. It's not the sum, it's just that's what they're asking for. Okay, now this is a probability tree diagram. Listen carefully. We're talking probability. Probability tree. It's probably not an official name, but I'll call it a probability tree. And it's very, it's very powerful to see it. Oh, you might not think that way, but I'll, I'll still say it. So let's say the first event is rolling a five. Okay, so I'll call. You never have something at the beginning here, folks. You only have something on either branch. So roll five. Okay, that's our first event. So we can either roll five or what's the other option and probability not rolling a five correct would you agree with me that's usually how how the tree diagram works so what's the probability of rolling a five everybody's like one out of six obviously what's the probability of not rolling a five five out of six obviously so these two add up to what one, right? Six out of six, one hundred percent. Remember that because I'm, I'm saying it for a reason. Okay. Now, what's the second event? The second event is roll a three. Okay. That's my second event. So you can either roll a three or not roll a three. Roll a three or not roll a three. Those are your options in the second event. So what, what are the options of rolling a three? One out of six, right? Not rolling a three, five out of six. Again, rolling a three, one out of six. Not rolling a three, five out of six. So here's your probability tree. I want you to write this down though. This would be the probability of R5 and R3. You're gonna, we're gonna write down the numbers in a bit. This is probability of rolling a five and what's, what's the next part? Not rolling a, a three, correct? We went down this branch here. Next, probability we're coming down this path here, correct? Not rolling at. Go ahead. And rolling at three. And last but not least, probability of not rolling a five and not rolling at three.
Now, I want you to listen carefully to this part. Remember when I told you we did a tree diagram and I told you how many outcomes are there if you have two, two dice? It's six times six, right? So it should be 36, 36 little branches. Do we have 36 branches? But this is not that kind of tree. This is the probability tree, right? So this is just looking at all possible probabilities. So let's calculate this. One six times one six. We'll figure that out in a bit. Here we have one six times five over six. Then we have five over six times one over six. And then last but not least, it's five over six times five over six. What's, uh, so you can just go numerator times numerator, that's one times six times six is 36. This would be five over 36. This would be five times 36. This would be five times five is 25 over 36. There's a reason why I'm doing this, okay? So just hang in there with me right now, even if you feel like running, okay? What do you think these tips here are gonna add up to if I were to add them up? 136 plus 536, that's six. Plus five is 11. I made a mistake. Can anybody spot my mistake? It's supposed to add up to 36, right? Or did I get that? This is 10, 11. Oh yeah, it's 36. We're good, we're good. You scared us there, mister. Right, just make sure you go, this is 36 out of 36, which is 100%, okay? That's always what you wanna check that those tips are um, adding up to 100. So if I asked you, what's the probability of getting both five and three? The answer is one out of 36 to get both, okay? To get only the five and then something else would be five out of 36 and so forth. In general, I know, I'm gonna, in gen therefore, when finding the probability of two events happening and are independent, Okay, we use the following formula. I want to explain this. Probability of A and B happening, you go probability of A happening times probability of B happening. That's just how it is. And you're like, what's the difference between these two? Do you notice the only difference is I flip-flopped B and A here. That's all. So if you just want to have that on your study sheet, I am okay with that but it wouldn't matter which one you multiply, okay? Uh, probability of A and B happening is probability of A times probability of B. That's another way of looking at this, okay? And um, I will leave that there. I will leave that there. And this is what I'm gonna assign. I'm not gonna assign anything from this section. I'm gonna stop there, but I'm gonna send you back in time. I keep this. I'm gonna do more mutually exclusive stuff. So it's 28 to 29 in this booklet, okay? This is mutually exclusive. That's what we're dealing with there. Please do it. Um, oh, 30. If you're interested in, like, I'm giving you a bunch of examples, like, hey, do you think this is mutually exclusive? Do you think this is mutually exclusive? It's an easy mark. If you want to practice that skill, I have the key to that as well. Okay, thank you very much. Make sure you take the time to do these questions. Okay.